This video is based on external growth and it's for unit 9 of the A-level AQA business specification. Now within this video, uh, we're going to look at one specific type of merger and acquisition and we're going to look at vertical growth in terms of backwards and forwards integration. So if we look at this uh, diagram in the picture, you can see that vertical growth, the backwards integration is towards the supplier and the vertical, the vertical growth forwards integration is towards the customer. So let me just show you this a little bit more. So if, so if we look at the supply chain, we can see the different, sta uh, sorry, the different stages. And if we're looking at a, uh, a forward vertical integration, so an example would be uh, the manufacturer buying uh, the retailer as a forward integration. That means the manufacturer is getting closer to the consumer. Or you can do backwards integration. And that might be the retailer um, merging or acquiring the manufacturer to get closer to the raw materials and the supplies and the inputs. So there's lots of reasons uh, why uh, this would happen. Uh, but before we get into that, I want to uh, highlight two examples to just show you uh, of real life examples of forward integration and also backwards integration. So this first example is a uh, vertical integration, which would be uh, classed as backwards integration. And this looks at the, the well-known uh, UK chocolate company of Hotel Chocolat. Now, if, you, if you're not aware of the company, they, they sell, they have a, they're a retailer on the high street that sell premium chocolate. Now, uh, what they decide to do, and the reason why it's a backwards integration, is that they decide to take ownership and acquire the, uh, the cocoa plantations that actually um, supplied them with the cocoa for their premium chocolates. Now this is an article that I found which um, discussed the merger and gi it gives you a little bit of an idea as to why they decided to. So it gives the, the article gives you a bit of a, uh, an understanding as to how Hotel Chocolat was formed. So it started off as an online mail order chocolate company and then they opened the first store in Watford in 2003. Uh, you can see the number of stores uh, have grown to more than 80, so we can see that there's been organic growth within that, and they've internally opened shops all around uh, the UK, but also in Scandinavia. Uh, they're, they're doing well, the turnover last year was 80 million, uh, but um, the owner is he's quite cautious, he doesn't want to grow too fast and too quickly. Now, um, he decided in 2004... Uh, to buy the oldest cocoa plantation on uh, St. Lucia. So it was uh, the 30-acre um, rubber estate with the hope of reviving this once thriving industry. It was a bold move, it states, growing our own cocoa, and it's one that goes against the overall trend in the chocolate industry, which is to specialise more and more in one particular part of the chocolate-making process. So they decided to uh, backwards vertically integrate. And... I'll give, you, I'll give you another example of, of vertical integration, but then we'll look at the reasons as to why uh, Hotel Chocolat may have done this. Now, the second example that I'm going to discuss is a forward vertical integration, and it's looking at Heineken. Uh, that's, um, this has been in the media quite a lot recently because it's had a lot of um, issues with the competition policy, um, which has put this deal in, in great danger, but they've actually now been giving, given the green light uh, in the Punch Taverns takeover to actually acquire um, a pub chain a a around Euro uh, sorry, the UK. So the first example we're going to look at is um, Hotel Chocolat and we're going to look at a back backwards vertical integration. If you don't know who uh, what Hotel Chocolat is, uh, it's a high street retailer and uh, they sell premium chocolate and their backwards uh, vertical integration was that they actually uh, acquired cocoa plantations in St. Lucia, so they had direct control of the inputs of the cocoa and the chocolate that was used for their products. So this was a, an article about the merger, and um, the initial part of this article was just about the, um, about the business itself and how it started. So it started in 2003 in Watford, and it, at first they initially organically grew, uh, internally grew and opened up uh, shops across uh, the UK but also across Europe as well as it says in Scandinavia and the turnover last year um, was 80 million and uh, however despite this farewell he's actually quite cautious and doesn't want to grow too quickly and experience some of the problems of, uh, of rapid growth so if we go back to 2004, he and his business partner, Peter Harris, decided to buy the oldest cocoa plantation on St. Lucia. 
and um, again it was a bold move growing our own cocoa and it's that one it's one that goes against the overall trend in the chocolate industry uh, which is specialized more and more in one particular part of chocolate making process but they decided to buy the uh, the the cocoa plantation totally and have full control of all the different types of cocoa inputs so um later on in the video we'll we'll look at the reasons as to why maybe um the hotel chocolate did that and all the benefits but also possible consequences they could have experienced. But we're just going to have a look at one more example, but this time of a forward vertical integration. So the example of uh, forward vertical integration is is one of Heineken, and um, they've they've just been given uh, the green light. Uh, in well to take over the pub chain Punch Taverns. Now initially they did uh, experience problems with this takeover from competition policies, which I'll look at in a second. Just saying that it was actually anti-competitive, and they had to make amendments before this merger was actually successful. They've done that now, and it's been given the green light. So this was an article uh, based on the deal, and it said his Hanukkah has been given the green light, uh, and the reason for that is because it's had to sell 30 pubs by the end of the month, just to ensure that um, it, it opened up for competition, and it w didn't show signs of monopoly power. Now, uh, the Dutch brewer, so obviously Hanukkah, well known for uh, for being a brewery, for producing, um, obviously, beer, and uh, brewing beer, sorry, and it's acquired around 1,900 sites from, from the Punch Taverns um, group, and it's been a four hundred and three million uh, pound deal to to uh, take over the the, the remaining one thousand three hundred punch pubs. Now the deal makes Heineken, which again remember is is well known for being a uh, for being a brewer, for being a manufacturer of beer, but now but it's actually got one thousand one hundred sites for its star pubs and bar business. And now it's the third largest UK pub group after Green Kings and Enterprises. So they've got a real force. In the retail sector now, and um, and obviously they want to be close to the customer, and they want that control. Now we'll look at some of the advantages and the reasons why Hotel Chocolat and Heineken have done such deals now. So, what are the benefits of uh, of such? Uh, vertical integration merger techniques. Um, we're just going to look at a few for both uh, Hotel Chocolat and Heineken, and just in general for forwards and backwards integration. So the first one I'm going to look at is in terms of exclusivity. And if we think about a, um, a backwards vertical integration, we think about Hotel Chocolat maybe buying that cocoa plantation. Now what they can do, and uh, again, and hypothetically other businesses buying their manufacturer, um, they, could, they could create exclusivity, meaning that, that they're the only retailer that actually sells that, uh, that supplier's goods and, and produce which would give them a massive competitive, a competitive advantage over the company, especially if it's, it's, if it's a well-known supplier, well-known for um, high-quality goods, and it's a popular product with consumers. Owning that supplier and making it exclusive to that retailer would give them a massive advantage. Another advantage of, um, of backwards vertical integration is the ability to control costs. Now, if, if you can buy your supplier, you can control uh, the cost of the inputs. So, for example, suppliers might put a markup on some of their suppliers when selling it to retailers. But by controlling and uh, acquiring or merging the supplier, then you remove that markup. So what you're getting is actually cheaper products uh, from the supplier because now they are part of your company. Another potential benefit of controlling and acquiring your supplier or merging your supplier is it might ease the cost also of um, distribution. If, you, if you're purchasing suppliers that are, are quite close to you, uh, again, having that control of the supplier, you might, it might ease the distribution costs of delivery and so on. And also, what you might want to, um, to do, if, if you can buy the... Um, if you can buy the supplier, then you can definitely also um, ensure that there's that trust with the with the suppliers that the product that is being sold to you uh, or was being sold to you as a retailer is is trustworthy, um, it's consistent, it's reliable, um, and then that's obviously a selling point to consumers that you've got full control of the quality of that product. In terms of forwards integration and the benefits for that. I suppose what you do is um, 
you're creating security, you're making sure that you have an outlet to actually sell your, your goods and uh, therefore it adds to that security and you know there's going to be guaranteed revenue from uh, from a customer base because your provider well, you've got, you've acquired, you've merged with that retailer that's, um, that's maybe a big brand and therefore is a popular outlet and customers go there, high footfall, and now they're going to buy your products because they are being supplied there because you've, you've acquired and you've confirmed all of these benefits um, create synergy, which I've already explained in the horizontal integration video. But remember, synergy is all about the companies being better off together rather than they were individually. So yes, individually you might have been doing well, but, but merging and becoming one, they're, even, they're doing even better. Now, there are some issues, there are some consequences of, um, of these type of mergers and acquisitions, so we're going to look at that now. So obviously, uh, the next question is, uh, could there be any issues? And let's have a look at the consequences and uh, the possible disadvantages of such a merger. So the biggest issue with vertical integration is just the lack of experience. These companies, whether it's forwards, whether it's backwards, they don't have real experience within that sector. I mean, obviously Heineken can do now because they've, they've done it before, but the very first time they carried out such a merger, they would have had no experience and no specialty. So it's a risk. And what they'd have to do is they'd have to, I suppose, assess the risk and, and make sure that there is potential and they know exactly what they're doing. Now, obviously, when you merge, often redundancies, uh, rationalisation can take place. But within this type of merger, it might be um, a better idea to actually keep hold of management staff because they need that experience, they need to know. Now, obviously, if... Um, if the risk is great and they, and they still go ahead with it, then it's that question mark of will it will it cause all those benefits that we mentioned before? Will it make a, a, a dish, well make it more productive or is it actually going to be inefficient? It's you have to commit a lot of resources to such a merger. It can be expensive. In the long term, it's obviously going to be really cost effective. But in the short term, especially if you don't assess that risk and have a strategy uh, lined up, it can cause serious problems. And again, mergers have failed. Vertical integrations backwards or forwards have failed because of this.